Yes, it's another free response. These are what dreams are made of. Answer parts A through D below which relate to reactions involving copper, Cu, and copper 2 ion, Cu2+. I'll see you later. A standard voltaic cell is constructed using the half reactions represented below. Boom. The value of the standard potential for this cell is 0.46 volts. After several minutes, it was noted that small flakes were adhering to the X electrode. Part A. Which metal, copper or X, is the anode? Justify your answer. All right. Think about your voltaic cell. Remember, fat cat and anorexic anode. The cathode is gonna gain mass in a voltaic cell. The anode is gonna lose mass. So if we are trying to determine what is the anode, and we are noting that small flakes were adhering to the X electrode, that implies that X is gaining mass, getting fat, and therefore copper must be getting skinny. Anorexic anode. Cu is the anode. Feeling great about myself, about to move on, before I realize that I'm not gonna get any points unless I justify my answer. X must be the cathode because flakes forming on the X electrode indicate reduction. Reduction occurs at the cathode. Boom, one point. Part B, determine the standard reduction potential for the X ion X electrode and identify metal X by referencing the list of standard reduction potentials. <sighs> Okay, let's recall the cell potential equal to reduction potential plus oxidation potential. We know the cell potential for this cell is 0 0.46 volts. 0 0.46 volts equals, now we just determined that the X electrode must be acting as the cathode and that copper is the anode. So we'll be looking for our reduction potential and we know that the oxidation potential of copper, be careful here, is negative 0.34 volts. Remember, we've decided copper is the anode, the place that oxidation occurs, and we're provided with the reduction potential list. <sighs> tricky, tricky, tricky. So if I just subtract a negative 0.34 from each side, I get X is equal to positive 0.80 volts. Use your calculator if you don't believe me, it's free response so you totally can. To look at the reduction potential chart, the most likely identity of the X electrode, silver. Silver is the identity of metal X. Unknown, no more. Part C, write a balanced net ionic equation for this electrochemical cell. All right, we just determined that silver is being reduced, boom, and that copper is being oxidized, boom. We need to check and make sure that we are gaining as many electrons as we're losing. To do that, we need to multiply our reduction half reaction by a factor of two. Now our electrons will cancel out. So when we sum these half reactions together, we end up with, boom. Make sure you check electrons lost equals electrons gained before you write your overall balanced net ionic equation. Especially tricky in a question like this, because you could balance for mass very easily, but we need to make sure we're, we're balanced for charge. Also important to include your states and include those charges of your ions. Part D, the cell was changed so that the copper two ion concentration is 0.01 molar and the X plus ion concentration is 0.1 molar. Does the cell potential increase, decrease, or remain the same? Justify your answer. All right, to answer this question, let's look at the balanced net ionic equation that we just wrote to describe what's going on in this voltaic cell. Using this reaction, let's come up with a Q expression a reaction quotient expression. At this point, you should recall that it's concentrations of products over concentrations of reactants raised to the coefficients in their balanced chemical equation, which is where this came from. Recognize as well, not including the solid components of a reaction whose concentrations remain constant and therefore are not included in our reaction quotient expression. As I think about the value of Q, I'm gonna plug in the concentrations provided. As I work to solve this, notice that our value of Q ends up being one. Because the value of Q is equal to the relationship between the concentrations of our products and reactants under standard conditions, the E cell, no not symbol, because these are not standard conditions, remains unchanged. A Q value equal to one provides identical thermodynamic favorability in the half cells 
resulting in no change of voltage. Boom. Again, as always, as you mess with the concentrations of your reactants and products, you are encouraged to reference the Nernst equation if that is something that you are comfortable with, although not required for the AP test any longer. In another experiment, current was passed through a solution of copper to nitrate for 30 minutes. Calculate the amount of current passed through the solution if 1.019 grams of copper metal were formed. All right, this question is still asking us to think about the relationship between charge and time. However, in this example, we're already given the mass in grams that have played it out. We've got 1.019 grams of copper. First thing we wanna do is convert that to moles of copper. And again, because we're looking for the amount of current, we need to know what the charge is and for how long in seconds. So by converting to moles of copper, my next step is then to convert to moles of electrons. And for copper two, it takes two moles of electrons to form one mole of solid copper. All right, calculator time. We get 0 0.03207 moles of electrons. Now, if we have 0 0.03207, moles of electrons. Recognize that Faraday's constant, which relates charge to moles of electrons, will get us to coulombs. 3,095 coulombs. So I now know how much charge was passed through the solution. We're also told how long that charge was passed through the solution for. However, recognize that it's given to us in minutes and if we're trying to determine the current, we need to first convert that to seconds. So 30.0 minutes, minutes, seconds, 30 times 60, enter, equals 1800 seconds, reminding myself there with sig figs where I should be. To determine the current, I'm just gonna take my charge, 3095 coulombs, put it over the time in seconds. 3,095 divided by 1,800. Enter. To three sig figs, my current that was passed through this cell, 1.72 amps. Or you could say coulombs per second. Boom. Done. Part F. The copper metal produced in part E was filtered, rinsed, and added to 250 mils of 0.25 molar nitric acid. The reaction represented below occurs. Subpart I. Identify the limiting reactant. Show work to support your answer. Again, we should be jumping for joy anytime College Board gives us some stoic. Lots of different ways you can solve limiting reactant problems. I like to take each amount of reactant, see how much product could potentially be formed, and determine it based on that. If you want to do it a different way, no problem. Just make sure you show your work. So, we have 0.25 molar nitric acid, and we've got 0 0.250 liters of it. Calculator. 0.25 times 0.25. It's got 0 0.0625 moles. Remind myself of sig figs of HNO3. Now, you can choose any product that you want. I've chosen copper 2 nitrate for a reason. Sometimes it pays to read through the question once before you start. Times three, eight, 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 eight. End up with 0 0.023 moles of copper 2 nitrate if I used up all my nitric acid. Next, I've got to do my copper metal, and we're told from part E that we got 1.019 grams of it. Convert to moles. Convert to the same product. Calculator it up. 0.016 moles of copper nitrate. Now, as we think about this and we try to decide on what our limiting reactant is, recognize it's the one that's gonna produce the smallest amount of product. It limits how much product we can make. Copper is limiting. It limits the amount of product formed. Boom. Finish this off, subpart II. On the basis of the limiting reactant identified in part F, subpart I, calculate the value of the concentration of copper two ions after the reaction is complete. All right, as you look at our equation, recognize that our copper is our limiting reactant and it's gonna get completely turned into copper to nitrate. Nitrates are aqueous, so all of the copper that we started with is gonna turn into copper two ion. So 
Think about what we just did in subpart I. We formed 0.016 moles of copper two nitrate. Whoa, sig figs, we should have a few more here. Moles of copper two nitrate. The relationship between copper two and copper nitrate is one to one. Therefore, I also have 0 0.01603 moles of copper two plus ion. If molarity is moles per liter of solution, we just need to figure out what the final volume of our solution is. Recognize that we place it in 0 0.250 liters. We're going to assume that the addition of the solid doesn't change the total volume of the solution considerably. So a quick division gives us a concentration of 0 0.0641 molar for our copper ion. Boom, and we are done.